Hey YouTube, it's Jim Bob Louie, and today I actually want to talk about what the enemy meant for evil. For instance, at the moment, what we see around us, this whole coronavirus, everything happening, we could get easily depressed. And the devil wants us to take our minds off of God. And so with everything going on at the moment, I surely believe that this is what the devil meant for evil, but I believe God would turn it for good. How can you say that, James? It's because I believe in the Bible, and the Bible talks about different stories, historical situations that have happened in the past that are still relevant today. Through no matter what situation you have done or situations given to you, God can still make it into good. For instance, we look at the life of Jonah. Jonah was a man. God told Jonah to go to a city called Nineveh and go preach. Tell them that they're going to die unless they turn to God, practically. And Jonah was kind of afraid and he decided to ditch that plan. So you look at Jerusalem, Nineveh's inland, and Jonah decided to take a boat to a city called Tarshish, Tarshish, which most scholars believe was in like Spain. So you want to go the exact opposite way. I truly believe that this is relevant in our lives today because there are some times in our lives that we turn away from God and we go the exact opposite of what his calling for our life is. And so he goes on a boat and there was a huge storm on that boat. And they're like, oh man, pray to God. The, the people on the boat, the crew, like, man, Jonah, pray to you, God, figure out what's going on. And Jonah's like, hey, I know what the problem is. I disobeyed my God and I turned my back on the calling he had for my life. And he's like, the only way you can solve this is to throw me overboard in the storm of seas. And the crew did not want to do that because they didn't want, um, Jonah to die. But eventually Jonah explained it better and um, persuaded them to throw Jonah overboard. And God provided, in the Bible it talks about provided, God provided a giant fish, fish and it swallowed Jonah. And on that boat, the, the wind stopped and the storm stopped and those people started to believe in God. Now the fish, the giant fish, swam to almost where land is, threw up Jonah, and Jonah actually had to walk to Nineveh. And so Jonah turned his back to God, went the opposite direction, and then said to himself, this is wrong, I'm going to go back to what God wants me to do. And he went to Nineveh, and he shared that within 40 days, the city is going to be torn down, torn down. It's going to be destroyed. And the people started to repent. They started fasting, and then the king even made an announcement and said that we are going to fast, we're going to pray, we're going to turn from our evil ways, and we're going to hope that God hears us and does not destroy us. And in that, God did not destroy them. You see, the devil will try to make things in our life as a distraction, try to make us walk away from God. And the devil wants that because the devil wants it to be the enemy meant it for evil. But God took his situation, Jonah's situation, turned him back a while around. God took what was meant for evil and turned it to good. Not only saved the people on the boat, but also saved a whole nation. And so you're talking about, James, what about, what about situations in my own life that I had no control over? They were just given to me, and, and I don't feel like God can use me because there are situations in my life that I, I don't... It will give them to me, generation, courses, whatever. Let's look at Joseph. So Joseph in the Bible, he was the youngest of all his brothers. And his father loved him more because he was born within the father's old age. The brothers hated that idea um, and hated him because the father loved him more. And then Joseph had a dream that the brothers were going to bow down to him. And of course, at that time, the high brother, the oldest brother, was the one that got the inheritance. And he was supposed to be the, the, the highest in the hierarchy of brothers. And Joseph being the, the youngest brother, that made no sense. And so they were plotting to kill him, 
But it says that Judas didn't like the idea of killing the brother, so instead they sold him into slavery for 20 shekels of silver. So you look at Joseph's life. His, his father loved him, his brothers despite him, and he was sold into slavery. Horrible situation. And within that slavery, he went into Egypt, and in Egypt he was sold into a master named Potiphar. And Potiphar was one of the king's officials, the pharaoh's officials at that point. It was a pharaoh. And God allowed Joseph to be shown grace in Potiphar's house. And so God allowed Joseph to even grow in, in the ranks of slaves in Potiphar's house and become higher up there. And he was trusted by Potiphar until Potiphar's wife wanted what she could not have. Potiphar's wife wanted something evil and, and wanted Joseph. She wanted Joseph. Joseph was a godly man and said, yo, I cannot sleep with you. You are my master's wife. We are not married. I cannot sleep with you. And so she stole his robe and told Potiphar that Joseph raped her, which was a law, a lie. And he was falsely accused, Potiphar threw him in jail. So not only did his brothers hate him, not only did he get sold into slavery, but he was also thrown into jail. I don't know about you, but I mean, like, the enemy meant this for evil, and it seems to be evil at that situation. At that point in your life, you're probably thinking, man, I don't think this could get any worse. I don't see how God could use me in this situation. I'm in jail at the moment. My brothers are a whole long way away. They hate me, my family. My father thinks that I'm dead. My brothers hate me. The only person that trusted me in Egypt was Potiphar, and his wife turned him and I against each other, and I got thrown into jail. But what the devil used for evil, God used for good, because in jail, he met two people. And two people had these dreams, and God gave Joseph the gift to interpret the dreams. Are you following along with me? So in one of the dreams, unfortunately, it ended up that the person was going to die. In the other dream, the person was going to live and serve Pharaoh. And they came true. After three days, that one guy was sent to be um, executed. And the other guy was sent to be freed and to serve Pharaoh. And Joseph's like, hey, I interpreted the dreams for you. Could you tell Pharaoh? And then time passed. You know, I truly believe that if, if servant that was serving Pharaoh immediately told Pharaoh, hey, this guy can interpret dreams, Pharaoh would be like, hey, man, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this guy can interpret dreams. That's pretty cool. But it didn't happen until Pharaoh started having nightmares. And then the servant remembered that, told Pharaoh about Joseph. Joseph was pulled, and Pharaoh's nightmares were talking about, like, seven good cows being eaten by seven ugly cows, and, and Joseph's like, uh, Pharaoh, both of your dreams mean the same as I think. We're going to have seven good years of plenty, then we're going to have seven years of famine. And let me get to that verse, because, I mean, what Pharaoh said was pretty cool. So in Genesis 41, verse 39, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made you all this known to you, there is no one discerning and as wise as you. You shall be put in charge of my palace, and all my people will submit to your orders, and only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. See, a situation that the devil thought, <laughs> this guy ain't gonna keep cope with this. You know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make it so his brothers hate him enough to want to kill him. Oh, but the brothers don't want to kill him. So throw him into slavery. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, he's growing too much into slavery. I'll make part of his wife want to sleep with him. Mm, that would mess him up. Oh, let's do that. Let's do that. Ooh, ooh, he's in jail. Even better. Nothing could good could come out of this. But God said what the enemy meant for evil, God would use for good. So even though he was in jail, even though he was sold into slavery, even though he was falsely accused in his brothers hated him. God still used it to good that he was able to set the right hand of Pharaoh and able to save a whole nation. So I started this off with, with Jonah and the big fish. Jonah and the big fish, he turned his back towards God, but God was still able to use him. And what the devil meant for evil, for him turning his back to God, still, God was still able to use him. 
And then we look at Joseph, who different situations that Joseph could not control, but was given to him, God was still able to use him. So we look at people's lives today. Maybe you think that you have sinned way too much that God can't use you. I thought of that sometimes. But God reminds me that what the enemy meant for evil, I will use for good. And so my thinking of, oh, I sinned too much, God cannot use me. God's like, no, I will use you even greater than you think I will use you. Or maybe it's different situations that were given to you that you have no control over, whether it's generational curses or whether it's just different situations that have happened to you. Whatever it is that you, you grew up in a home or a home, God was still used for good. So remember that no matter what, how dark it looks, no matter how dark it is, one tiny match can light up a whole room. We need to stop looking at our situations as a curse, but looking at them as what will God use from this. Like, maybe, subscribe, hopefully.